Hello YouTube, Wildcat Piper coming from the Wildcat Lounge. Hope everybody is doing great tonight. Smoking uh, my Peterson P Lip Bulldog. Guess it might be a little bit bulldog. And um, in it tonight, I'm smoking what is might be coming fast becoming my favorite 2019 blend. To this point anyway, early in 2019, and that's uh, the Crumble Cake by uh, Sutliff. It's the Red Virginia. It is uh, a very, very good blend and one that I have thoroughly enjoyed. And I'm so glad I got two of these tins. But I can already tell I'm probably going to have to make another purchase. Speaking of purchases... Had an order come in today of some tobaccos that I had ordered, and I want to share those with you. First of all, I got me a tub of velvet. So glad I did this. Um, 12 ounces. Uh, it's a great, great blend. I could almost uh, just completely smoke that, but I do like uh, different tastes. And uh, so that's that's one of the ones. I came across, I was on Smoking Pipes, and they had a, a special on a brand called Planta. And I think that's the correct pronunciation. I've never heard of it before, and I thought, mm, I might try. They had some interesting blends on there, and I wanted to give a shot. This one here is their exotic mixture. So I wanted to uh, try to, to get that. And uh, so we've got the exotic uh, mixture. They also have a full English mixture. I got two ounces of that. And they also have a um, sweet pear mixture. Never have tried sweet pear before. And I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm a little nervous thinking that it might ghost a briar, so I'm going to smoke this in a brand new um, cob. But uh, I'm, I'm interested in trying that. And then uh, the last thing I got, there is, a, there is another brand on there called Low Country, and they had natural Virginias and Orientals, and I wanted to try that, so I got me some of, some of that as well. So uh, I'll do a review on those to kind of let you know how they taste um, but as you know I've already done a review on on the velvet and um, it was an excellent review which also reminds me this coming Sunday I'm going to start the blend for February and it's the Bork and Riff um, bourbon whiskey so I will open that. We'll do a, kind of a first impressions review on that. And uh, that will also start the, uh, the um, blend for this month. And uh, so looking forward to that. Uh, I've really been looking forward to trying the, uh, the whiskey. And, uh, but uh, also tonight, uh, my lovely wife made me some coffee. That comes in handy out here. It's still a little bit nippy, not too bad. <coughs> you can probably hear the heater in the background. <coughs> mm, that is so good. <coughs> that coffee went down the wrong pipe. Sorry about that. <coughs> Um, <clears throat> we all have different other hobbies that we had that we're involved in and there's one that I recently kind of picked up <clears throat> I don't have all of them out here I might bring some more out maybe in the next video just to kind of show you a few more but one, uh, one of my hobbies has been uh, knife collecting More importantly, kind of bushcraft, 
knife collecting. I really got interested in the in the bushcraft and <clears throat> people going out and um, you know spending the night and uh, just really enjoying nature and uh, so I, I really enjoyed watching those and some of the knives they have are really kind of cool knives one of the ones I hear people always talk about are Mora knives and some of you guys probably know what I'm talking about never heard of them until I started watching them well I finally purchased a Mora knife they're not expensive they're pretty reasonably priced this is a, a more a bushcraft knife, what they would call it, used as a bushcraft knife. Uh, one of the reasons it's got a 90 degree spine on the back here uh, that is used for uh, striking the uh, a, a lighting steel to uh, get the, the fire going. And so uh, they would use that. If, some of them are not always 90 degrees. This one is specifically 90 degrees just for that purpose. Um, it's got a Scandinavian grind on it. <clears throat> Some people like that. I, I don't really have uh, a yay or nay on it. I've not really used this knife too much. It just it just got here. So I can't really tell you if I'm for or against it. Um, but it's a good knife. A uh, good bushcraft knife. Another one that I got, they call it a, a backpacker's knife. Um, simply because you can... Put it, hook it into loops, rings on your backpack, and take it, take it with you. It's a bench craft, bench made. I always say bench craft. It's a bench made, um, a knife, and um, here is uh, here is that knife. Not real pleased with it. Now, it wasn't expensive, it wasn't a lot of money, but when I got it, it had a couple, it had this little ding in it right there, and as I was looking at the edge, the edge is really gnarred up, and I've hardly even, I've hardly used this knife for anything. Um, so I wasn't real pleased with it, but, um, you know, I'm going to uh, hang on to it. I uh, was not happy about the, uh, the nicks in the handle just you know it's a china knife so what do you expect right but um, I, I got it anyway um, I thought it was kind of cool a backpacker's knife you can hook that I actually take this <laughs> with me uh, every day it's kind of an EDC knife and <clears throat> my real EDC knife I uh, that goes on the, my right side pocket I took it off just to make it easier to get to is uh, this is one of them it's a SOG and um, it's a it's spring assisted and so uh, I've got another SOG exactly like this one ex with the exception of it doesn't have the black coating on it um, but I, I, I like them and uh, so that's kind of my EDC knife. I, what I do like about it, so it doesn't spring, it's got a lock on it right here. You can pull that down, now it's locked, and uh, you can't open it, so it's not gonna open up in your pocket. <clears throat> and uh, so I, I have a knife with me every day. Um, here for a while, I've been carrying this one. I, I kind of go back and forth between this one and uh, a little tiny knife. I think I've shown you guys that one before. And, and then the other saw like this, but but uh, polished, uh, brass polished. So those are the knives that, that I will show you for tonight. Um, really, uh, really kind of interested in that stuff. The other thing I wanted to show you. Is, uh, <clears throat> I was wanting to kind of find an axe. I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So I started researching, and I mean, you can spend a lot of money on axes, and I didn't know what would be the best length to get. You can get a hatchet, you can get a big 32 inch, uh, like a, a logger's axe, you know. What I settled with 
what's kind of, some people call it a, a kind of a, a spectacle. Uh, they don't a lot of times they don't even call them a real axe. Some of the purists really don't like them, and we really say bad things about them. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> what I got was a Fiskars. Um, people have uh, said some things about Fiskars, and I tell you, I, I went online, I researched it. There's a guy who used his Fiskars knife for a year, never sharpened it, and uh, he showed us. Uh, he did a video of a Fisker's axe uh, on the, the last, uh, <clears throat> the day before he was going to sharpen it. And he he was amazed at how it still cut. And um, it, it's great steel, holds its edge very good. Um, I've never used this, so it's, you know, it's pretty, pretty clean. But, uh, you know, people were talking about you know this the binding on here around the head is is not going to hold and uh, there's a video of a guy trying to break the axe and couldn't um, he compared it to a wooden axe handle and the wooden axe handle actually broke first uh, I wanted to pummel on the end and um, you know so they, they would take a pummel and put it through its course and this thing held up great and so I I, uh, I got this. It was 30, 30, 31, I think. They have a hatchet, which is, the, this is the X15. Uh, um, you can see it right there. It's the Fiskars X15. They also have an X7, which is their hatchet. And they also have an X32, which is their uh, Forester Axe, you know, the, the big the bigger axe, you know. Um, I, I like the Fiskars, uh, mainly a lot, of, a lot of the reason too is this handle. It gives you good and it does, it won't slip off. One of the things they say a lot of people do is they take a hockey stick tape and they put it around the handle there and uh, it keeps it from slipping even less. So I thought about getting some of that, but I mean, you can really uh, get a full swing on it um, but you can also put it on a backpack carry it into the woods um, if you're into bushcrafting this would be a great bushcrafting axe to use uh, what I have noticed is a lot of people use the X14 I mean the X7 which is a 14 inch handle uh, for theirs um, and love it and uh, so but this is the axe that I got uh, for that. My old axe is right here. This was an axe that was actually, I think it must have been from my wife's family. Um, as you can tell, there's no head in it. It's gone. <laughs> it broke. And I was using it last summer and it snapped on me. Not snapped off, but cracked, and I didn't want to use it anymore. I was worried it would fly off. So, <clears throat> so I was in the in the search. I thought I could get a handle, and so I was looking at handles, and didn't really know what kind of handle. It's got a I don't know what kind. I don't know what they call that right there. That opening. It's not a bushcraft uh, axe head, but um, so anyway, that's what I that's what I did. But uh, yeah, it's kind of into some other stuff. Um, really enjoying it, enjoying my pipes, enjoying this tobacco, enjoy you guys. <laughs> but uh, I hope you guys have a great night. Stay warm, those of you in uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Blow some smoke rings in the air, but above all, my friends, you be blessed. I'll talk to you soon.